second. Yeah. Um, next up is salvation. Yeah. Uh, coming from a Christian background, Christianity is, what's that, Hebrews 10, 10, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, Hebrews. I forgot oh, you got a word. couple of them. You got uh -oh. one in the book of Acts, you know, chapter 4, where Christians are literally take that out of context. They love to say Israelites love to take things out of context. Right. But we're we know the context. That's why we're able to go precept upon precept. Gotcha. See, from Genesis to Revelations, the book was only written to and for the Israelites. Gotcha. You know, so even in that, it's only signifying Israelites. But as your question to salvation, what is it and who is it for? Gotcha. You yep. can get those scriptures on the Yeah, so if we can kinda explain that if you can't, I guess why somebody's looking that up, I guess give a uh, overview and then we can go into the detail of the scripture is what? it being saved from a christianity is all about being saved from hell and going to the celestial place in the sky yeah and that's what we was taught yeah you know and it's, it's it goes into a boat not the celestial going into the sky because he tells us in the book of matthews that thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth got you you know but salvation is going into two things being literally saved from our enemies mm-hmm and from the judgment of the Most High God as well. Gotcha. Let's get that in the book of Luke. You got something? Luke yeah. chapter 1, verse 68. So we're going to read actually what salvation is. This is the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 68. And it reads, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. So we see who the context and who the audience it is that they're speaking to. It says, and had raised up in horn of salvation for us. The us is a possessive pronoun, talking about the Israelites. In the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So that's what true salvation is, being saved. From our enemies, meaning all other nations outside of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the Israelites today. That's right. And from the hand of all that hate us. Okay. And so when you say like the, the judgment of God, again, Christianity, I'm just trying to paste, paint this contrast of the difference. Christianity, we believe, G Christians believe Jesus came, died for the sins, rose again, so they don't go to hell. That this gives them a place Again, in heaven. So I guess whether that's on earth or in the sky, however, they, this is the whole premise for Christians of Jesus to save them from a, a hell. Is in, in Hebrew, in, in the Israelite camps, do y'all believe in an actual place of torment or hell? Yeah. We believe in a, a place of torment, but hell, they have the wrong understanding that's of. That's right. Okay. They think it is like where you go, that hell is, is, is basically how the Bible defines it, a place in the grave or death. That's gotcha. Right. You know, but we do believe in some form of torment because we read about the scriptures all the time. Like you have to pay for your sins. Got gotcha. you. You have to pay for those things. Go ahead, Ock. And just like Ock was saying, yeah, we do. I mean, not all counts believe it's a place of torment, but us, at that as we do believe it's a place of torment because we read in Isaiah chapter sixty-six and verse twenty-three. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read it for you. I got you. Right. Let me get that. I read it. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 23. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another. So a new moon is our high holy days. Or this is how we count our months in, in uh, being the Hebrew Israelites, right? Read. And from one Sabbath to another. And from one Sabbath to another, right? Read. Shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So this is going into a future prophecy because it is on, on the Sabbath, all flesh ain't coming to worship before him. But... In the future, all flesh going to come to worship him on the Sabbath day and on the new moons, right? But read on. Verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses mm -hmm. of the men that have transgressed against me. Uh -huh, read on. For their worm shall not die. Read. Neither shall their fire be quenched. Mm -hmm. And they shall be an abhorring to all flesh. So during this time, like you say, for one new moon and, and even going on to the Sabbath, we're going to be going to see all the people that have transgressed the laws against the Most High God. So they, that means they're going to be going in, they're going to be in a place where it's going to be burning. They're going to be burning and, and the worm, and like you said, your worms are not going to die. And it's going to be a burning that cannot be quenched. So it's going to be a place of torment that all flesh is going to have to be. 
So by is, transgressing God's law. So will this be something that you feel like lasts eternal, or is this a physical body that just go and burn up and then disappear? Like, how does that that work? Because I mean, any concept on Earth right now, we know we set something on fire, uh -huh. it burns up and it consumes. Right. So in this scripture, is it saying that people, these people, are just going to be pretty much set on fire and die? Or they set on fire and can stay on fire forever. And that's a good question because it's two debts. You got the physical debt, what mm -hmm. we teach here. And then you also, we teach that you have a spiritual debt as well. Okay. Going into the second debt. Now, we know that the first debt is going into the thermal nuclear fire. Okay. Where the Most High God is going to cause the nations to turn one against another in World War Three and shoot nuclear weapons over here at America. Then... Spirits will be brought back to get the official spiritual judgment of the Most High God. And we can prove that by Romans, I mean, Revelation chapter 20. Verse 1. Which one you uh, I want uh, 20 and verse. Give me Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12. 10. Yeah. Thanks, sir. The book of Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, uh -huh. where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Read that part again. Uh. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So we see our people being what? Tormented or seeing the other nations being tormented. Because just like you alluded to, we know that the body once it's burned, it's gone. Yeah. So this is alluding to a, 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 a spiritual type of torment to where it's going to continue and continue. And that's why we have a parable of Lazarus. But read on. Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it and whose face of the earth in heaven fled away. Uh -huh. And there was found no place for them. Going into the most high. Read on. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And the books were open, meaning your book of life and the Bible, and he's going to compare the two. Read on. And another book was open, uh -huh. which is the which is the book of life. Read on. And the dead were judged out of those things uh -huh. which were written in the books according to their works. So we literally see where it's going to be judgment placed upon individuals for the work that they did, whether it be evil work or whether it be Israelites keeping the commandments and receiving salvation. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. And the dead and hell. I'll read that again. And death. Shalaki. Shalak, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Read on. This is the second death. This is the second death because we know this is on the spiritual side because how can death be physical? Gotcha, we gotcha. know that it is, but in a spiritual sense, meaning we're going to be immortals for the Israelites that keep the commandments. So we see a physical torment with actual literal thermonuclear fire, but then we also see. The spiritual side, even referencing in the book of Matthew, where it says, fear him that has the power to kill both body and soul mm -hmm. in hell. That's right. So if I'm hearing this correctly, I just want to make sure I'm hearing uh -huh. this correctly. So technically, everybody is immortal. It's just that some people will be immortal in torment and some people will be immortal in the kingdom. Well, no, only the Israelites was made to be immortal. So the ones who to burn forever. I guess my whole thing is if you burn it forever, are these people conscious of their burning forever? That means they immortal. They just stuck here or are they getting thrown into the second pit and they just burn up in the end? That's the second death. You burn up and you just disappear forever. Well, no, because that that would negate the torment. No, the most high God is going to make you feel that thing forever, you know, forever. So that means they are mortal in this place. Then they can't yeah. die. They just okay, forever right. burn up there. That's what I'm saying. Immortal means that you you alive forever. No matter where you located right. at, somebody is alive in hell forever. Some people are gonna be alive in king in the kingdom. And forever. now you can use that sense, yeah, you, you know. Sense. But I understand how you use it, but I wouldn't attribute it to that because, like we said, it's gonna be like a place of torment in the spiritual realm, basically. You, you understand what no, I'm saying? I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I, I guess I'm using it more on the sense that you can't die. So yeah. you're a person here burning up. You wish you can die, but you can't. You're going to feel this forever. And yeah. those who follow the commandments and was in honor God, they'll be immortal in they'll, a place yeah. again, in, in the, the sense of living. Living, right. yeah. Because, okay. Yeah. And nope. we a lot of times we bag these things up, like going to the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, and verse. Start up at verse uh, 11. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, and verse 11. 
and they that have loathed my law. Meaning people that have hated God's laws, read on. While they had yet liberty. Because all people have liberty to keep God's law, statutes, commandments. That's why he has Israelite camps out there trying to teach our people to keep the commandments. Right. That's the liberty that they have, read on. When is yet place of repentance was open unto them. And place of repentance is open unto them. Read on. Understood not. They understand it not. Meaning they hate when we are out there teaching our people who they are according to the Bible. Teaching them that they must repent and keep hmm. God's laws. Read on. But despised it. But did what? But despised but it. But hated it. And all we're trying to do is use God's laws to get our nation back in order. Read on. The same must know it after death by pain. Read that again. Uh. The same must know it after death by pain. So this is where you have to ask yourself, how can you have pain after death? Mm. Also alluding to what? That second death or that spiritual death to mm -hmm. where you'll be in torment and literally feeling that torment and that pain for knowing that you didn't keep God's law, statutes, and commandments. Got you. 